All right, guys, let's check out this crazy expensive MRG G-Shock Square. Here's the little hang tag that comes with it in the part number. This is the MRG B5000D-1. There's another one, which is a DLC coded black version with gold accents. And then there's this guy here. And price points, this one's $3,500. That's right, $3,500. And then the black variant is $4,000. Here's a quick list of some of the things that are on it. But if you're into squares, you kind of know the standard modules for the most part. This one has a, a different module in it. And I'm not 100% sure what is really different in it versus this guy here. But there are some changes. I don't know if it was just an updated module and they're going to be moving that forward or if it's going to be exclusive to the MRG but it has basically the same functions overall so what you're really doing on this one the price point is because of its construction and the materials used so before we get into that let's talk about size case size 43.2 millimeter the effective lug to lug is 49.4 that's like just the case not the bracelet and I measure the thickness at 13 millimeter and unsized it weighs in at 112 gram to size the bracelet I've done it in the past with the titanium ones it's going to be a pin and collar this is not my watch so I did peel the plastic off but I'm not going to size it um, I'm sure Jerry wouldn't have minded and maybe he would have even appreciated me sizing it but I'm just not going to do it sorry um, so speaking of Jerry, that's whose watch this is. He did pick this up and had it sent directly to me. Thank you very much. And I think he picked it up from Tappers. I'll put a link in the description. So, I mean, I'm not in a position to pick one of these up right now. So big, big thanks to Jerry for doing that. And if you want to help support Jerry, I'll also put a link in the description to his Etsy store. You can pick up like cool like 3D printed things like my pointer fingers that I use and watch stands and a bunch of other things that are really cool. So the module in this watch is the 3501. I think the old module in this guy was uh, like 34, yeah, 3459. So 3459, 3501, I think they just maybe refreshed it, updated it. I'm sure they did some things that might have been in the display because it does look crazy crisp. It looks very clean. It does have tough, tough solar, the multi-band six, the Bluetooth connectivity, so you're gonna have accurate timekeeping there, 200 meter water resist, sapphire crystal with AR coating. The clarity on this is beautiful. And then we get into the construction and the materials used. So, so let's zoom in a little bit so we can take a closer look at that stuff. Because the bezel construction alone is 25 pieces with a strong focus on this area right here, as far as the construction goes, this T looking piece here, shaped like a T, this is part of the suspension system. So the T is coupled into this. If you looked at, at a breakdown picture, you'll see that this is also and then done up and then internally in here, there's I think some silicon, silicone piece and then uh, like a little leaf spring type thing. And that's on all four corners and that is gonna help impact um, resistance from pretty much every angle. So when somebody had mentioned it, that there was gonna be springs in there, I don't know why I was thinking like springs for like the bezel, but it's really like the entire thing is kind of like the way it's tied together with the leaf springs. It really is gonna absorb impact from many different directions, not just from the bezel. And the bezel itself is actually a different construction than the rest of it, as is the bracelet from the case. So most of the case parts, most of the 25 pieces on the case are actually constructed of T, uh, TI-64 titanium. And it's a special alloy. It's gonna be uh, more scratch resistant and everything like that. Plus I think it has a coating on there as well, a clear, some sort of clear DLC potentially. The bracelet is actually made from what's called DAT-55 grade titanium. And these all come from like different manufacturers that Casio worked with to build their watch. I mean, like these aren't exclusive materials to just these MRGs. They're used in other industries. It's just Casio spec'd out certain things for their watch. The 
bezel, you can see, is much shinier than the rest of the watch. Is actually, I think, what's called uh, Corbonia, Corbon, I'm going to screw this up, Carbarian, I think is what it's called. And it is a special alloy, and it is said to be four times harder than titanium. So also potentially more scratch resistant, so it should hold that finish better. And I really like that polishing on there. The other thing they did, even with the bracelet, is all those little polished dots, those are separate pieces. Those are not polished within the bracelet. And you can see it's just beautiful polishing. It's Salah's polish components. So it has like super depth to it. It'll look black even in some cases. It's very similar or nearly the same as Zeratsu finishing. But you can see even on the back side, you can see how those are constructed. They're like popped through almost like rivets, but they're polished first before they go in. And that's how you can get that polish to look like that because it's done independently of the bracelet and then constructed to it. Functions on the watch, very similar to most other G-Shocks, uh, squares anyway. So you get the second time zone, the roll time, you get your alarms, you get your stopwatch, you get your countdown timer, and then back to your time. And then to adjust that, you just hold down your adjust button, and the buttons are easy to use. You can do this um, via Bluetooth as well, and then you can just cycle through all the different time zones until you get, in my case, it's going to be the NYC or the Eastern Standard Time. So as you cycle through, you're just looking for that display on the top right. And there's, I forget how many, there's a ton of different time zones in this thing. So there's Chicago, there's New York. And so once I get that selected, I can go hit the adjust button and it's already received radio signal before. So it's going to be accurate already. And then up here is the light button and we can actually adjust the length of that as well within the adjust button. I've shown that stuff many times. The module works essentially the same. Clasp is also different. MRGs, if you're not familiar with MRGs, they typically, most of them, are going to have this lock feature here. You still have, well, you, you lose one micro adjust. The standard bracelet had four on the clasp, and this one's going to have three. But when you close the clasp down, you can then lock it, and basically that traps that pin in there so you cannot release that. That will not come undone. So you have to do that and then do that. Do you need to lock it? No, you don't have to lock it. It's just an extra security feature. Even the buttons are a little bit wider than the standard ones. They're like thin. So this one's a little bit heavier duty constructed. And then if we try to look at the case back here, you're going to see the MRG logo on the titanium screw down case back with all the information on there. These are not limited or numbered as far as I can tell, but they are done on their premium G line of construction, which are hand assembled and all everything fitted and quality controlled from that G line. That's their all their premium stuff from the Casio brand, whether it's the Oceanus or the G-Shock are going to run that line. I'll see if I can find, there should be a video on YouTube that shows this G-Line. If I can find that video, I'll put that link down in the description too. Check it out. If you're a Casio fan or G-Shock fan and you didn't know this existed, seriously, check that video out because it's really cool. Let's pop this on wrist so you can see what it looks like on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It, it just, it's perfect. And I got to be honest with you guys, initially I had thought, yes, I'm going to pick one of these up. And I was going to get the black one with the gold accents because it looks stunning. But thankfully, Jerry sent me this one because the more I look at this one, there's no other G-Shock in the lineup that looks like this. There's no raw stainless titanium looking type watch in their lineup. They're, they're, they're usually more polished. So they have like the chrome looking one. And then they have black ones. Of course, they have the gold one, the Bling Master. Um... But there's nothing else like this, so it definitely is going to be more distinctive. Whereas if you have the black with the gold, it might put... I mean, it looks different than the standard titanium, the one we call the Stealth Wealth, which I don't know if we can even call that one that anymore because G-Shock just, you know, pulled that card and upped our game here. So if you want to really flex the Stealth Wealth with a G-Shock, other than going with a full gold actual square, which you're not going to find and probably couldn't afford anyway... The, these guys, you know, at 3500 and 4000 um, you know, we've got to step our game up. That's just crazy amount of money to do that. 
But I figured I'd show it to you guys real quick so you can get a quick look at it. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to spend any more time with this. As soon as this video is done, I'm actually going to box it up and ship it out. I don't like to hold these any longer than I have to because other people need to enjoy them. So if we kill the lights and we check the illumination on it, it's it's great. It soft fade on, soft fade off, works great. Thanks for watching, guys. And again, big thanks to Jerry for allowing me to check this out. See you on the next vid.